The characteristics of the white man is evil. He was made like that through uh, nature, now we say. Naturally, he was made like that. Uh, we would say, then, uh, devil. We can say a devil uh, cat out there, a devil element, a devil we could call most any grafted thing, a devil, you see. But actually, when we say Satan, we mean uh, a man or a people that their uh, weakness is not safe, uh, confined to themselves. It spreads, and the others is affected by their weakness. And the white man, we say, is the devil. Why? Because of his weak, physically uh, coming into being from the original man, or uh, aboriginal people of the earth. When I met him, uh, I looked at him, and he, uh, well, this, it just came to me like this, that this is the son of man that the Bible said that uh, prophesied that will come in the last days of the world, and that uh, I couldn't get that out of me. And I shook hands with him, and I said, to him, I say, you are the one that the Bible prophesies that will come at the end of the world under the name Son of Man and under the name the Second Coming of Jesus. And so he looked at me a little stirring, and then he smiled and he put his head down to my, uh, beside my head and whispered in my ear and said, these words. He said, yes, I am the one, but who knows that? Uh, but yourself. And uh, be quiet. His mother, he says, was a white woman, and uh, his father was a black man. Yes, sir. He taught us that uh, he was born in Mecca, Arabia. And that uh, he <clears throat> had come in and out of this country for about 20 years before ever that uh, he made himself known to us. He had uh, studied, he says, out here, or rather he uh, had uh, enrolled in the California University there, and he lived with the white family out there, he says, while he was going to the University of California. How long he went uh, to this uh, university, I don't know, but he says to me uh, that he did go to this university and enroll there, and other universities he mentioned to me. And finally, he told me this, that he had studied every uh, uh, educational system of the civilized world, and that uh, he could speak, and, well, speak 16 languages and write 10 of them. He could speak 16 fluent. Well, I was not too much going into scripture at that time, and uh, I had not studied too much, but I had, from a child up, wanted to uh, learn the scripture, because my father was a preacher, and I always, from a child up, wanted to uh, help him or take his place one day as a preacher. And so I was always studying the Bible. And I had uh, read much about the coming of the judgment and the coming of God and uh, Jesus returning uh, to uh, resurrected dead and all like that. I had studied much of that. And uh, so all of his talk and teachings correspond with what I had learned of the scripture. And therefore I become one of his uh, uh, I, I should say 100% convert.
And on his uh, uh, leave of us, he began to tell me what uh, I may expect, what will come to pass, and what I should do to try and uh, make my people qualified, uh, rather to reform them and make them acceptable by the Islamic people and uh, teach them that they must change completely uh, in the way of righteousness and uh, that they would have to forego the name that they was in and that he would give them all a name himself. And uh, much he said, much he said to me. He used to teach me uh, night and day. We used to sit some time from the uh, early part of the night until sunrise and after sunrise, all night long for about two years or more. He was with us three years, a little better, and uh, I was constantly around him, and he was constantly teaching me of uh, things to, of Islam and and what is to come and what was before. And uh, this is the way that we begin. And uh, we pat it, pat it <coughs> hand on my shoulder, give me kind of a little show a way around it. And uh, there was some more uh, there at present. And he started talking to some of them. And uh, they about a month Later, uh, he told my wife uh, to tell me to go ahead and start teaching out there in the little part of, uh, I would say, it's not the little part now, it's a very large part, in Hammett, in Hammett Michigan. That's uh, in Detroit. Hammett is in Detroit. And I was living in Hamtramck at that time. So he says to my wife, uh, you tell him that he can go ahead because I had wrote him. And uh, he received my letter. And I was telling him what I could not tell him there in the public. And then he says to me, you go ahead and start teaching and I will back you up. And I started teaching that uh, he was the answer to the prophesy of the coming of Jesus uh, 2,000 years after uh, Jesus' birth, and that this is the man at that time. And so I did begin teaching that uh, for the Son of Man, uh, the second coming of Jesus is present. Uh, this is him now here among us. But he didn't allow me to go too far with uh, that kind of teachings uh, while he was present. He told me, he said, you can do that after I'm gone. He said, don't talk too much about me. He says, no, he says, uh, give them a little milk. That's the way he talked all the time. And he never would say anything hardly just direct. He would give it to you in a way that you would have to learn just exactly what he meant by what he said. And so uh, he says, you cannot give babies meat. And uh, I understood what he was referring to. And so he said, give little baby milk. He said, and when I'm gone, he said, then you can say whatever you want to about me. And uh, that was about it. And he named all of my family Muhammad. He says to me that uh, he had been studying for us what he meant to teach us and to uh, reform us for 42 years, he says to me. And that his father, he says, uh, I should let the world know these things, 
what he said to me. And uh, uh, as I never have went too much into his uh, break and into his uh, sayings of what uh, took place, uh, <clears throat> so I am going to tell this. I intend to give a full description of it on the 26th of next month in Chicago. Give it in details. But at this time, I can say this, that he told me that uh, his father wanted a son that uh, would uh, go and search for uh, the lost uh, people of their uh, kind. He said they had uh, it in the Quran, they had it in the Bible, uh, scriptures, that there would be a lost member uh, at the time uh, of the resurrection, and that they had to find that one because it did not give the location. He says his father wanted to uh, make a son that was uh, would be able, pardon my language, uh, to go and search all the civilizations of the earth to locate this people. And uh, when he finds them, uh, he would be able to teach them and uh, make a disciple of his own of them uh, to teach them and uh, try and get them together and return them again to their own people. And so he said he was that man and his father, uh, first child, was a girl. And so he smiled and he said he had to make another try for me. And uh, he said that his father was darker than any of us that he was talking to at the time. So he's a real dark man. He was still alive. And he said, this is the way that uh, uh, this took place. He says, and uh, now, he says, I'm here, and I want you to know, he says, I love you, and uh, my father made me for you, and that uh, we uh, want you uh, to know uh, yourself, and uh, put you on to your own kind. And that is what that, uh, he taught, and that uh, of us, about our uh, uh, being away from our people, and that uh, we was unqualified now to mix with them, because they were Islam people, and we were not and that uh, we didn't even know who we were. And so that was true, and that was easy to get over to us. And I take in all of this, and I taught my people and been teaching them the same. But I never did go into his birth and uh, how his father trained him and what all he said about that. Uh, because uh, I feared my people would not believe since that uh, they uh, believed mostly spiritual. Uh, God is a spirit or something like that, and it's not uh, flesh and blood. He's not visible. And uh, this I'm very slow about getting over to my people, but now uh, they will just have to take it or leave it. These are the facts, and this is according to the Bible, that the son of man would come and not a son of a spirit. And this uh, I want to make clear to them and uh, those who believe in the spirit being God and not man. The uh, main base of it all now is to show forth who is God and uh, he's not what they has thought he was. That he's in man and man is God. And, uh, so that is the way that goes. And in the Chicago on the 26th of next month, I will go into detail uh, for his birth and uh, his childhood and his manhood. <laughs> and uh, 
so forth, uh, uh, scripture that is re relating to this uh, coming of God in man. And the Son there, as uh, the scholars know, it only means the uh, way he has given it to me, that he was born from his father, and, uh, to, well, to go after the lost found uh, sheep, the Bible call it, and that Jesus made it in beautiful parables that he will search for the lost sheep and all like that. So it all now has been to fulfill, and this is it now that we are living in, and that my work uh, from him is to uh, teach my people these facts and to reform them and make them what they should be as they are children, uh, as the Bible teaches from God, but they are lost in evil and practice evil and that they must now forego evil and accept righteousness because they are creatures of righteousness. Well, uh, that happened like this. After uh, he had given to me what he wanted to... Uh, give to me uh, as the teachings and the work of uh, uh, preparedness of our people, then it was not necessary for him to remain uh, here among us. So he taken his leave, as it is uh, said in Quan that uh, the people is not worthy that God remain among, among them. But he makes a messenger of that people, that uh, through that messenger he uh, will reach the people through him. And the Bible is, is verified the same. And so he left, and that uh, he give me hint about his return, but now uh, there is just as much prophesy that he will return or he will not return as the is uh, of his returning because uh, the Bible say he will send his angels uh, and they will take care of uh, the gathering of his people. I don't expect him to return in person not like that because uh, uh, there is too much uh, for us to look forward to that he will not it is not really necessary if, if he's going to send his own uh, people, as they refer to angels, to gather the believers of my people. It's not necessary. Well, that is something that uh, we actually cannot say. If uh, one would... Uh, up such truth as the truth of God uh, to the people, I do think that he's within his right to stay out of the sight of the people until he has uh, uh, won everything to himself, as the Bible referred for us to it like this, that uh, he's something like a king looking for a kingdom, and that he go and he uh, visit the, the people and then he leaves the people and goes away and wait until the time when that he can secure the kingdom then he returns to the people that uh, he had made himself uh, manifest to so I think that is a pretty good uh, answer <laughs> yes. according to what uh, uh, Master Farad Muhammad taught me on the race question, the origin of the races. Uh, the, in the beginning of the races, they numbered a round or a four. And from these four races of people, they has produced many different types of people. 
uh, but they are not, uh, say, independent uh, in their beginning. Um, they came from uh, one. We say today we have lots of various colored people all over the earth. From, uh, we say, from brown to white. We are not all the same color due to it mixing with uh, such colors as black, brown, yellow, and red, and white. This has produced many other various colors. And uh, the origin of it, according to the teachings of uh, Master Farad Muhammad, to me, was from a scientist, a god, we uh, see him. We see him as a god. Uh, back 6,000 years ago, uh, started a, uh, we say, a, a scientific, or I should say, uh, a master grafting uh, work on the human being to produce a new civilization, a new race of people from the original race of people, our aboriginal people. This man, Yakub, uh, <coughs> who uh, discovered in the joint of uh, the black man that uh, he had uh, two people in him and that he uh, had learned through study and experimenting on joints that uh, this uh, second germ could produce a powerful people uh, that would be able to rule uh, that which they came from. For uh, uh, around 6,000 years until the, the father or uh, the aboriginal produces one uh, superior to his man. And that uh, was this, that he taken through experimental work on the germ of man, a people of uh, what we call today a white race. But before he produced it, that white race, he produced it a brown race. He produced it a yellow race and uh, so on. There is uh, his first uh, grafting from the black man according to the teachings of Master Farad Muhammad to whom we see him and know him today as being God in person. <clears throat> that uh, this grafting uh, in its first stage he had a brown race of people from a black people and uh, it taken him according to the teachings of God 200 years to produce that brown race and he kept up the process of uh, killing off the uh, brown or the darker one and marrying the lighter one on to the lighter one uh, for another 200 years, he had a uh, uh, yellow race of people. And in this length of time, these brown people were spreading over uh, the area, uh, I would say uh, migrating over the earth to find them a home to themselves. And so the, when the yellow race w was produced, it uh, he... Uh, started to migrating over the earth and uh, from the yellow race about 200 years this grafting kept in process uh, they, there was on the same uh, alert, uh well it was an alert he was on according to the teachings of almighty God to me in the person of master Farad Muhammad to whom praise it do forever uh, at that time, 200 years, keeping up birth control law, 
This is what he established. He established it on this island, and there was his lab that he was uh, awakening, we call it a human lab, to produce his man. And from this yellow race, he had a white race 200 years later from them. And this was the end of his work. This was the man he was trying to get to. That was our white race. And uh, that made it, uh, uh, in the total time of his grafting out of black, white, 600 years. And uh, this figure uh, tallies with the Bible's teaching of uh, the man being created in six days. This is, uh, this days here you have means uh, uh, a thousand, pardon me, a uh, hundred years each, six hundred years. And this also tallies with the creation of the universe, that's six, uh, the whole entire universe according to uh, the Quran was also created in six uh, periods of time. And so Mr. Yakub, the mighty scientist of that time, he produced it, his man on six because it did tally with the creation of the universe and it was uh, to this number uh, that he could not further uh, his work and uh, they would be masters, gods, to rule the earth and the people, everything of life uh, for 6,000 years. And at the end of 6,000 years, the aboriginal people will uh, have at that time produced it another one, uh, mightier than uh, Yakub in wisdom and knowledge, and uh, he would be equal with that one that uh, created the heavens and the earth. And uh, he would have the power and the infinitive wisdom to make his word be as the first one. And uh, this is the man we have before us today. The whole praise is due. Master Farad Muhammad uh, is that man that have the wisdom or uh, the knowledge, <coughs> excuse me, of how the creation took place in the first place. Uh, that's what I mean, the creation of the universe, how it took place, and uh, how life and everything began down to uh, 6,000 years of Mr. Yaku and his world and the knowledge of the world to come, of which he himself is uh, the God of. He's the God of the next world. He's planting it now. And uh, um, that world that he will set up, uh, we see now gradually merging in, uh, will be forever. There will be no change in that one, because uh, uh, well, the scientists just don't see through the future any other change. And they don't have too much knowledge of his change. Uh, so he has not let go yet. He brought me up uh, pretty close, but he has not as yet opened up as uh, we have in Bible and Quran. I have not seen and I have not heard and uh, it has not entered into the heart of uh, us what that uh, he will do. But uh, uh, we get little inklings now. We are right in his time. And we do know that he is going to bring about a complete change. As uh, I study now for 33 years after his coming, I have learned my own self from study of his words, what he said to me. That uh, it won't be a world like uh, we see today, nothing of the kind, not uh, even to the orthodox Muslim. Their world 
will not uh, even be considered in his world. As uh, the master scientist, a god, 6,000 years ago, Mr. Yacoub, he did not make this world, your world, uh, on the basis of uh, our world. We have a complete new world and a new people uh, in you. So will the, uh, the great uh, Mahdi, uh, Master Farad Muhammad, he will also build a new world and a new people. And he did tell me that uh, uh, how that uh, we would uh, start taking a change in a new people. Now, just exactly what uh, we will look like, I'm not too sure of that, but I do believe that he's going right back at the origin, but he's going to make a better people. Uh, what I mean to say, a people that will be more stronger physically, and uh, they will be taught in such way that they can live much longer. Uh, uh, individual will live probably a thousand or more years and teaching something about the history, not the history, but uh, about the people on Mars, he often would refer to me uh, that, just think of them, living 1,200 of our Earth years, he says, and we die in less than 100 years. It gives me an, an idea that uh, he wants to make a people that will live a thousand or more years. 